because you shit on Bernie. And I know that you think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? It appears like Cat Williams is back and the internet is giddy with praise for her fierce salvos. The smooth talking, sharp tongued, quick witted comedian appears to have taken a few jabs from fellow comic Steve Harvey, leaving him perplexed and at a loss for words. What did the comic say? Did Steve Harvey truly deserve to be called names? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason he's supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Everyone knows that dealing with Cat Williams is never a good idea. Nobody can match the seasoned actor and comedian's razor-sharp tongue and unparalleled grasp of words. The most ungrateful person is usually the one who has ventured to cross Cat Williams, as the seasoned comedian buries people under mountains of intricate wordplay from which they can never recover. But that's not exactly what draws people to him. One of Cat Williams' greatest qualities is that she always tells it like it is, no matter who is listening. With a sprinkle of verbal spanking, he makes his point forcefully, leaving his victim looking red-faced. According to rumors, Steve Harvey is the most recent celebrity to suffer as a result of Cat Williams' outburst. Unverified rumors state that the seasoned comedian and Harvey are at differences over comments Harvey made on Bernie Mac's passing, in which Harvey was accused of being a hypocrite who hated Bernie when he was still alive. Steve Harvey has been admiring Bernie Mac ever since his death in 2008. He has often expressed his admiration for Bernie, saying the comic was the most talented and hilarious comedian he has ever worked with. When the Bernie Mac Auditorium was inaugurated at his former high school, Steve stated the Chicagoans' legacy was unrivaled. He insisted that the 50-year-old was exceptional while fighting back tears that threatened to stream down his cheeks. His eyes were obviously red, and it appeared as though he was mourning the loss of a legend. He occasionally choked during his statements and sought the help of Cedric the Entertainer and the previous comic kings, D.L. Hewley, to give him solace. Harvey broke some startling news to the late comedian's family when he was still struggling to collect himself. Designating November 14 the A's Bernie McDay, he invited Chicagoans to celebrate the day in the same way as Make does Thanksgiving. However, Cat Williams claims that everything is fake and the TV host is only performing for the cameras. He thinks that when Bernie was still alive, he and Harvey had a falling out. The veteran comedian denied Steve Harvey's comments about Bernie Make during his Shia Shia segment, saying the game show host was jealous of Bernie's success. He accused Harvey of bickering with Bernie over sections of movies and TV shows that already bore his name. He wondered why, given how much they claimed to love Bernie, someone would call TV studios to take his role away. He explained how Steve Harvey had earlier insisted that the makers of Ocean's Eleven adopt Big Mac's stance, but the studio had stood its own. Still, Steve shed the most tears during Bernie's funeral. The whole ensemble of Kings of Comedy paid homage to the late Bernie one by one during the burial, but Harvey's was the most poignant. He waxed lyrical about how, because of his greater sense of humor, the late comic was usually the last act on tour. Anyone who followed Bernie was doomed, he warned. He would have broke up the audience and left you with nothing to say. Comparing the late comic to a train tragedy, he quipped that he had damaged every stage that had been allotted to him. However, Cat rejected all of those praises, saying that Bernie was someone he truly hated and that Steve Harvey was only acting for the cameras. He wondered why, after Bernie's death, he wept like a crocodile after having criticized him while he was still alive. He scolded Harvey for pretending he didn't want to be a movie star, even though it was obvious that no studio would consider hiring him. He claimed that during a time when studios and production companies were looking for dynamic performers, Steve Harvey was not a versatile enough actor. For the same reason, this is the same person who hated Bernie Mac. Every year, 30,000 fresh screenplay entries are received by Hollywood. Not one of them asked for a black guy who looks like Mr. Potato Head and is a backwoods rogue who can't carry on a meaningful conversation. There isn't any. Range is essential. It's interesting to notice that Harvey wasn't the only one who thought Cat was pretentious and hypocritical. DJ Ed Lover, a longtime friend of Bernie Mac, co-signed Cat's comments and claimed to have been told by Bernie about the presenter of the TV game show's dislike for Cat. It's also said that Bernie didn't stop there. It is said that he revealed to Ed Lover all of Steve's unscrupulous actions throughout the years. 
Bernard told me out of his own mouth what Cat Williams said about Steve Harvey calling to try and get Bernie's role on Ocean's Eleven. And that kind of stuff, the well-known DJ said in an interview with his podcast, Come On Son. I agree with Bernie Mac when he says Steve Harvey hated him. Before Bernie Mac ever took the stage at the Shia Shia Club, Steve softly said that he wasn't the biggest fan of his. The television host asserts that he lost the group's favor when the kings of comedy chose to focus on their positions in television and movies rather than stand-up comedy. He stated that he only consented to participate in humorous events on the weekends and TV programs during the week, turning down several film offers. He was very clear that he didn't want to be a movie star and that he would much rather maintain his reputation as a stand-up comedian. However, Cat Williams exposed Steve Harvey's lie by claiming that the aspiration of every comic was to become an actor. He stated that Steve didn't receive movie parts because of his lack of skill. His expertise was limited to anchoring game shows and conversation shows on television. He lacked the fire and acting talent of Bernie and others. Consequently, studios seldom invited him. Longtime comedy scene watchers appeared to agree with Cat Williams. They enumerated additional instances in which Harvey appeared to detest Bernie Mac, such when he claimed that his grudge against the late Mac sprang from Mac's choice to pursue a career in cinema and television instead of touring with him. They thought Harvey was acting contradictorily when he publicly declared his distaste for Big Mac while tearing up after he passed away. Most were shocked to hear that Harvey had called Ocean's 11 producers to replace Big Mac. The last straw for most supporters was when Ed Lover co-signed Cat's words and claimed Bernie had told him about Steve's hatred of him. It was decided that the testimony of two different people was adequate proof of Steve's sincere intentions. Others concurred that it was typical for two individuals to be at odds. The argument between Harvey and Bernie Mac made perfect sense. Some fans questioned Cat Williams, saying he was just making things up as he went along, and wondered what proof he had that Harvey had called studios to substitute Bernie Mac. These supporters made it clear that Harvey's sincere feelings at Big Mac's burial symbolized his love for his fellow comedian. They also acknowledged Steve Harvey's role in establishing a Bernie McDay and an auditorium in his honor. Harvey's fans believed he was speaking the truth. Cat asked Steve why he was imitating the lead character in Mark Curry's TV show, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, when he had stated he didn't want to be a movie star. While speaking with Shannon Sharp for the club, Shia Shia, the veteran comedian, pointed out all the similarities between Steve Harvey's show and Mark Curry's Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Cat claims that Steve recently made an appearance as the principal in a comedy. He provides the idea that he has the best cast of black guys in the business since he has a high top fade and wears a suit. It's also a man unit. Why aren't you a movie star? You ask them. I didn't want to be a movie star. Furthermore, Kat said that Steve Harvey had taken other humorous materials from Mark Curry and used them to narrate the events of one of his stand-up performances. Kat said that Steve attended Curry's act and stole his Halloween humor. A few years later, the TV host used it in his own comedy, Spectacular, but he didn't give Curry credit for it. Mark Curry, who admitted that Steve Harvey had copied his set but made minor modifications, co-signed Kat's remarks. I saw my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. On what show? On, when he was on his the talk show he had, and he did, he, he did all my Halloween... Curry related the story, stating that one day he was watching TV at home when a friend called and asked him to change the channel. At first, the guy's orders astonished him, but he soon found out that Steve was performing his act for television. He flipped through the channels, and as his friend had mentioned, Steve Harvey was performing his act on TV without acknowledging the songwriters of the songs. When Mark confronted Steve Harvey about his pranks, his fury knew no bounds. Think about the Steve Harvey case. Curry referred to it as a B-movie dot, you never know. Perhaps he's not stealing my belongings. I was starting to believe him. They all know whose work it is, even if one of his writers was engaged. Mark Curry thought there were other reasons why Steve was stealing his goods besides money. I think there are ulterior motives. In his words, it's not about the money. Harvey has enough money, so it seems like you want a piece of me. He mentioned that Cedric had visited him at one of his comedy store appearances and expressed his admiration for the act. In the backstage area, Cedric came over to him after the show and thanked him for a job well done. Cedric took all of Cat Williams's materials and used them for one of his presentations. 
Cat Williams was unaware of this. He just made a small alteration to the joke's ending to make it sound and look different from Cat's. Cedric executed the whole piece precisely as planned, but for a small modification. This is not a practical joke. This joke is my best joke ever, and it's the last one I will ever tell. Williams continued in 1998. This prank is mine. Comic View has it. Cedric stops by the comedy store. From the crowd, he looks at me. He goes inside the backstage section. He tells me how much he loves the comedy and compliments me on my job. He is doing the joke exactly as it is in his last skit on the Kings of Comedy, two years later. My car has become a spaceship, thanks to him. Sadly for Cedric, however, the joke was Cat's Crown joke, his favorite and last joke he would ever deliver. Moreover, the producers loved the joke so much that it was included in the show's ad after he repeated it several times on BAT. In the latest episode, William said he thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. The issue stemmed from the fact that I had already told this joke twice on BET's Comic View. It did so well on BET's Comic View that it was utilized in the ad. The Club Shay Shay Instagram posted a soundbite from the interview on their site, prompting Cedric the Entertainer to lash out in return, accusing Cat of altering history. He wrote, Revisionist history, regardless of Cat's perspective. He thought Cat done a great job on the work and was happy about it. He believed that Ice Cube would be the best person to address the accusations that Cat had made him wear a dress. The 55-year-old said that she had no reason to lie to you about it. They made it funnier and smarter by giving the character the full pimp twist. I'm glad they made that decision because there was no way in hell that I could have played that role that way. Despite this, several supporters still stand by Cat Williams' claims, especially given their insistence that he had no reason to lie. Most importantly, Smiley dressed up for his next movie, First Sunday exposing Steve Harvey's purported lies and confronting him about his true nature. But Steve has said nothing and decided not to believe Kat when she says anything. That marks the conclusion of today's video. Peace deciding not to give Kat's words any credence. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to like and comments. Also subscribe our channel for more videos.